Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're in the shop and I want to talk about sanders, specifically flap sanders, how I use them, how you can use them, and how you can make them if you don't always want to buy them. If that's something you guys are interested in, be sure to stick around. <laughs> Well guys, like I said, today we're going to be going over flap sanders. I want to go over with you guys the ones I use for chainsaw carving, medium to large pieces, and the ones I use for smaller carvings and more refined carvings and my power carvings, my high-end kind of stuff. First thing we're going to do is go over the chainsaw carvings, what I use for those. No, this is not a chainsaw carving, but we're going to get to that piece in just a minute. Now here's a chainsaw carved bear. He's not fully done, so normally I wouldn't chainsaw chainsaw he's already chainsawed right normally I wouldn't flap sand him yet I would want to finish the eyes and all my features and stuff and then lightly flap sand around those and maybe redefine them with my tools later I'm always using my sando flex it looks like this there'll be links to this down below in the description along with everything I show you guys something similar you guys purchase through those links they're to Amazon and they help support this channel and every purchase is greatly appreciated, you guys. I, I seriously appreciate it. I mean, I've seen a lot of purchases going on through those links lately, and I mean, it's awesome. Thank you. Really, I appreciate it. So, you get done with your carving, right? A lot of times you guys see me burn it. So you can either burn it right away, which will kind of dry it out and make it easier for sanding. You burn it, say you're done, you don't want to sand it. Or you burn it and you can hit it with a sander, like the Sando Flex. All right, so the Santa Flex might go for like 40 bucks or so. You don't want to spend 40 bucks, not a problem. If you've got some extra sandpaper laying around, well, I should be more specific, sanding belts, a cloth back sandpaper is what you need. You can create this sander right here. Now, it's really simple and it's very effective. So again, this can be done after burning or prior to burning, or maybe you don't burn it all and you just paint, which is totally fine. What these two tools are gonna do is get rid of all the fuzz and knock down the high points, all the sharp edges that are created. Now, not sharp as in cut yourself, but when you guys look at something, you have a very sharp angle. Animals don't have that. They're very rounded and smooth textured. And so your carvings should try to be that way as well, okay? Now, like I said, you can buy the Sando Flex, you can buy refills. I'm really getting ahead of myself, kind of excited about <laughs> shooting this video today. Let's, let's rewind it. Let's talk about the Sando Flex. So the Sando Flex, I think, comes in around 40 bucks. Okay, you guys, this is a very useful tool. I still use this a lot. Now, you can buy these refills that pop inside here. And, you know, they're a few dollars. I think they might be 10 to 15 bucks a piece. And they make it easy because they go right in. Or you can go ahead and buy a roll of sandpaper like this from DeWolf, this 80 grit sandpaper or 120, which is only one inch wide. And that's the same size that fits in the Sandoflex and you will have to make your own refill. You'll have to kind of go over that, and figure out how to make it. Um, I guess that could be a video in the future if you guys wanna see how I made mine, but that's not for today, maybe in the future. If you wanna see how I make my refills for this Sandoflex in the future, comment below, we'll do a quick video on it. So that's how I do my Sandoflex. I make my own refills and I use them. Now, I've gotten into making my own flap sander fully. And what that entails is having a shaft, a way to tighten down the sandpaper, and several pieces of cloth back sandpaper. In this case, I took a half inch bolt that's about six inches long, I believe. Um, you guys don't want to use the carriage bolt like I did. It makes it really tough to tighten these things down. So just use a regular headed bolt that you can put a wrench on. Get a nut to fit and two washers. So you put a washer on, you put all your sandpaper on, another washer, and then that nut. In this case, I only have one nut because I misplaced my other one on here, this nut. There should be two, all right? Because when you put these on this way and this thing is spinning in forward motion, the nuts that are keeping it tight are gonna wanna back off, 
So if you put one on, it backs off. If you put two on, it keeps it tight. You tighten them right down together and then nothing s loosens up slowly. Everything stays nice and snug and you don't have to worry about it. When I use this right now, because I'm just too lazy to go get a new one, it loosens up after a few minutes and I gotta keep tightening everything back down. So keep that in mind if you guys decide to make this. What I did though, is I cut all my sanding belts in half. All my used old sanding belts from woodworking that are just, they've had it, but they've still got enough grit to do what I need them to do on a chainsaw carving, which is sand it. So this is basically what it looks like. You wanna get them all cut roughly to the same length, find center, drill it out, punch it out, whatever you gotta to do to get a hole through the center of all of them, whether it's one at a time or all of them at once, and put your bolt through. Tighten them all together, and you're good to go. I'm gonna throw my dust mask on here real quick. I'll show you guys what it looks like using it on this bear. All right guys, so I got my half inch drill that you've been looking at. This is from Porter Cable. It works pretty good. I like having the side handle so this thing doesn't get away from me too much. And uh, you just start sanding. You're gonna to wanna to feel it out before you start going full bore though. So get in here. Kind of just did half the bear here real quick and there is a considerable difference okay I'm gonna to try to bring you guys in a little closer so you can see it now the more you put on here on your flap sander the stiffer it becomes and so I've got way too many on there I should have less uh, sanding pieces less sandpaper on there so it can contour to the carving better so it's not as rigid so when you guys uh, start doing this or start trying this put on like maybe four of them facing forward and four facing back or three forward and three back, okay? You wanna go right in order too. So say it's four of them, have four of them facing forward and then you put the other ones on facing the opposite way. So sandpaper grit is out and then fan them out in a pattern like you saw mine and then try it, you know, see how it feels. Maybe you wanna add more, maybe you wanna take away some, but just keep that in mind. But you need to have so many facing forward and so many facing back because when you're going back and forth it's working each side okay and if there's nothing on say the back side then you're not getting any sanding action as you come backwards and forwards and so just keep that in mind right, here's the side we just flap sanded and this side has not been hey guys so the voice is not gonna line up here for a bit i have to do a voiceover some reason the audio really messed up on this part of the video so let me see here basically what i'm talking about is the side that's been flap sanded and the side that's not you can see where it's a little more smooth on the right compared to the left the fuzziness from the chainsaw carving and all that is taken away and that's what you want you want that fuzziness taken away so your piece can look better look smoother not have so many sharp edges like you'll still leave the saw marks you see all the detail that's still there we're just removing the fur the fuzz if you leave that fur and fuzz and you just paint over it you'll have issues with it peeling later it just it also does not look like a finished piece it still looks very rough so just take those things into consideration um if you decide not to flap sand them sometimes they just they don't always look like a, a well-finished piece like right here where it's not sanded if you were to paint that that would look really rough it'd be a pain to clear coat that spot and it just doesn't always look as good so that's all just kind of a uh, voice in this over because yeah that audio is trashed oh and the santa flex right there that i showed you is good for getting up in those tight spots like under the neck near the paws and things like that so yeah all right, guys, so I'm going to keep you in pretty close because these tools are quite a bit smaller, and I just want you to be able to see what I'm talking about. Now, the first thing we're going to look at are the sanders you guys can go ahead and purchase. This is 
this is where you're going to probably spend more money right off the bat with these and I don't know they, they I think they last longer than the ones that I'm making to be honest but they can't get in every little spot due to their the the way they're made so let's take a look you know these are from Dremel okay you got some different different sizes here you know 120 80 seem to be the ones I'm able to find the most I will leave links to Amazon to these but they're not always Dremel brands so sometimes they're an off brand which I haven't used so it'll be up to you guys make sure you always look at all the links I share you know it might not be the exact tool but it might be just as effective now these work great I use these often I bought a bunch in advance and probably won't be buying as many since I started making my own. And the reason being is making my own is much more cost effective. At the same time, these don't break down as quick. So it's kind of it's kind of like back and forth. You know, I think these are working really well on flat surfaces like when I do my fish. I really enjoy using these on the fish because I can get a good sweeping sanding motion and smooth them down nicely in certain spots. Where the ones I'm making, they have a more of an edge and I could leave more of a sanding line. So here's one of the ones that I've been making. This one is pretty shot. Like I'm ready to replace this thing and that's what I'm going to do next. And it's really gotten its use. So how did I get to here? How did I make this? Well, the first thing I did, honestly, was I bought a carving kit off of Amazon, okay? I'll try to find it again, link down below, you know, yada, yada, yada. This kit came with all kinds of stuff in here, okay? And I think this thing was like 12 or 15 bucks. It was, I think it was less than 20. And the bit that I needed for this was in there. Now, it's basically the same style bit as this right here. You guys can see it a little bit better. Now these are the 3M sanders. You guys can use these as well for sanding. And these work really great, but these are very, very expensive. I use these on my higher end small carving and furniture pieces when I really need to just get in and sand those detailed spots. You see all these little fingers? They get in and sand really, really well. And this, it, it's just, these are these are pricey. I'll try to find them on Amazon as well and share them. So, all right, let me break. I know I'm all over the place, you guys, sorry. Hopefully you can stay with me. If not, you know, watch the video again. <laughs> if you guys have questions about this stuff, just ask. Ask below, it's cool, I'll answer. Do my best to answer. So basically you guys are looking at just this shaft, right? And you got this screw on top, which is so much easier to take apart if you leave it in the tool first. Don't do what I did. And take it out of the tool to replace it. Normally I just leave it in there. Not really 100% sure why I took it out. So these smaller flap sanders work the best in a Dremel or some kind of flex shaft carving tool. In this case, I've been running it in my Sandoflex carver. Sandoflex, what the heck am I talking about? In my Fordham, my Fordham flex shaft. I don't know why I said Sandoflex. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I've been running this in my Fordham. I just like it because I can control the speed. You don't want to run these at super high speed. You burn them up really quick. They're done and you got to make new ones. So low speed. You want it in something with variable speed, whether it be a Dremel or, you know, one of these guys, variable speed for these little ones. And the same thing for the ones that you purchase. You want to be able to have a variable speed. These run slower than that big one. They run fast. You burn them up fast and... You get into those 3Ms, you're throwing away a lot of money really quick. So let's take a look at exactly what this is and uh, how this thing is going to go together. So this comes in that kit I just showed you guys. You can buy these anywhere, really. You can. You get on, you look, get them through Dremel. You can probably just buy this. I can't think of what the heck they're called. I'll probably be able to find it, though, and put the name next to it uh, for an Amazon link. But a lot of times they will come with... A cutting wheel like so you might get a cutting wheel you know on these things cutting wheels in this kit are not that great either they kind of they're junk if you use them on metal but anyway so this is what it is right here all right and what I've been doing is cutting strips of one inch wide sandpaper from DeWalt got this right off Amazon 80 grit and I have a 120 grit box over there as well 
And what you do is you cut a piece that's about an inch, inch and a half long. This one's actually way, way too long. If you get it too long, you get a lot of wobble in there. And if you need it longer to get into a tight spot, that's fine. But you want to do like two sheets facing forward and two back or one and one. And it just, you get a lot of wobble. You don't want to kill your bearings for sanding. So, all right, get this thing trimmed down about an inch, inch and a half. And then what I've been doing is I cut all of them. I've been running uh, five of them on that sander. So I've got five pieces facing forward and not five, I'm sorry, three pieces facing away from me on the shaft. So three facing away and two facing back. Because when you get sanding, you'll see you'll be working both sides of those. So you want sandpaper on both sides. Could probably go six, but five's just been the number that's been working good for me. So I get five cut, all right, put it on a piece of junk pine, and I have this nail. I sharpened it up just a little on my sander, put it through all five, whack it with a hammer, punch it all the way through. Pull it out, put all five on here, put it together, and then you've got your mini flap sander. Now that sander works really well. I've been actually using it with 80 grit on this piece for my furniture build. This is a leg for a table I'm building. Hey, I'll put a link up here and some links in the end possibly to this table build. Uh, I don't have it completed, so they'll just be work in progress kind of videos. But if you guys just watched the video of this, you may have been linked over to this video. And this is that piece anyway. So I've been able to get into these really tight spots and sand out the carving marks and things from my saber tooth bits and really smooth it out. Now that's just with 80 grit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go to 120 yet. I kind of like this rough look, you know, it's not super refined, but it's still pretty neat looking. So I got sanding to do, which I will end up making a new disc or a new flap sander head for it and get going on that, but wanted to just show you guys. So this would be a finer piece. Now, those small flap sanders could be good for going around the face of your bear, like up around the nose or the snout. You sand with the big one, you burn the whole bear, and you want to just clean this up and have this be tan or maybe the eyebrows tan. You could use that little flap sander to just take your burn off or the paint off and uh, bring it back to the wood color in those areas. So, just some things to think about. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to make a quick video going over these things, going over these flap sanders that I make and that I'm using, that I'm buying, and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys in your carving and creating art endeavors. Uh, if Again, if you guys want to want to buy the stuff that can be purchased, check out the links below through Amazon. And as always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. You know, I, I do. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Also, comments or questions put them below cool i try to answer everybody's question i always try to reply or at least give a thumbs up you know and uh yeah i think that's about it thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time